it's an honor everything. to be on your show. What is happening right now? It's an honor to be on your show. This is a big deal. Go Blue Demon. <laughs> Thanks for getting that in. What's up, guys? Amanda Smith here with Sarah Kustock. It is so good to see you again. I'm so happy you were able to make time for me today, so thank you. Anytime, Amanda. I'm so excited to see you. I wish we were in the same place once again, but th this will have to do. Yes, this will have to do. Okay, fun side story for everyone real quick. I already had my fangirl moment with Sarah. Uh, when the Nets are here in Salt Lake City, I was lucky enough to do staff for her and her broadcast partner, Ryan Rico. And I kid you not, like, I'm sitting there, you know, working during the game and listening to the broadcast, and I'm how is this my life right now? Because I have just been such a fan of yours for so long. So I have to thank you again for your kindness to me then and your continued kindness to me now. I appreciate well, it. Well, always. It's always here. And that's uh, that's a part of everything we do. I feel like I think about all the people that helped me along the way. And I know we all have those people. But you were tremendous. I, Me and Ryan Rucco should be thanking you for the incredible work you did during that game and on the stats. So that's all of a part of it. We, we recognize people that put so much effort and preparation into whatever job they're doing. And I so respect that about you. And um, it, it's really fun to see. Well, obviously, I admire you like many others do in the work that you do within the NBA as an analyst. Uh, for young broadcasters maybe watching this, what advice would you give to someone who's looking to maybe be in that same position someday? I think just with anything that you do and whether it's in broadcasting and as you know, and as the broadcasting and um, just the whole landscape of it continues to evolve, there's so many different roles and positions. And I even think about, you know, the analyst work I do now in the NBA was something that I didn't even necessarily envision when I started. And to be honest, I didn't even necessarily think I was going to get into broadcasting. My passion was the competitiveness of sports um, and just the opportunity to stay around the game is what drove me this way. But I, I just think for any aspiring broadcaster, be prepared, you know, make sure whatever it is that you're doing, whatever role you want to get to, understand that you may divert paths throughout the course of what you're doing. And, and I found that in you know, throughout the course of my many different roles and covering many different sports, it's mm -hmm. as prepared as you could be, as as much as you could soak up knowledge, even if you think that the current role you're in isn't what you ideally want to do at the end. Everything helps. And I think just knowing that the more you can grow, the more you can learn, the more that you can learn about the way everything works together. Um, you know, I worked in the production truck and had so many different roles leading to that or even jobs outside of broadcasting that helped me um, in what I do on a daily basis. So whatever it is you're doing every single day, make sure you put as much effort into it as if you were doing your dream job, because that will pay off once you get to the point that you have the job that you've been dreaming about. You know, when you say you didn't necessarily envision this for yourself. At what point did this job become a reality for you? I think, you know, in many capacities and whether it was high school basketball games, college basketball games, I always, I actually began as a women's college basketball analyst. And so this was always what I loved most and the wheelhouse of the sport I enjoyed most. Um, veered off in a lot of different ways of covering other sports, doing different roles. I think, you know, when I had the opportunity to um, fill in on a Brooklyn Nets game uh, four or five seasons back, that's when, when I sat there, when I was able to, fortunate enough to do the game with Ian Eagle, uh, that's when I realized, wow, this is, this is it. For as much as I've enjoyed so many different varieties of roles and positions this was one that I was most passionate about and, and so that's when it started to crystallize of how do I make this a, a job and a role on a more regular basis. You know you talked about the time that you spent in the production truck. I did my homework on <laughs> I was reading this article uh, that said, you know, you weren't calling one of the games and you had an off day, but you still went in and sat in the truck and just watched and learned what you could do better than from the other side, even at the level you are at. Why is it still important for you to do things like that? I think just the amount of, and I truly feel this way. I was not saying it, you know, just to be nice about you and the role yeah. of doing our stats for the game, 
we all but truly like we're, we're all only as good as those that we're surrounded with and you know when we get a chance to watch a great broadcast on tv you know now i'm watching all the nba um playoff games and just the respect i have for for so many people in the jobs um you know whether it's play-by-play -play or analysts or sideline reporters but but we know the producers and the directors and you know the the associate producers down to the production runner and just it, it takes an entire team to make everything work. I think that's the beauty of live broadcasts. I think that's the beauty of still feeling like you're a part of the team. And I think knowing how to help others do their job even better and knowing how to make it easier for those that are doing their job. Um, if, if I know how I can help make my producer's job even easier or directors, or again, it goes down the list. Um, it, it will only benefit the end product. And, and our goal is to have the best broadcast possible. So I think, you know, to me, that's just very important. And whether it's a broadcast, whether it's, you know, you can go expand this across any career, or any field, um, and it kind of all falls back to being a part of a team, um, which is what I was a part of my entire life. Th that's that's where you reach the, the pinnacle of the best possible broadcast. And um, so, yeah, so I think I, I think it's just hugely valuable and important and it has always been important for me. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. We're going to play a little uh -oh. game. Uh oh, <laughs> I'll go first so that you can think of yours. OK, I'll go first, we're going to do two truths and a lie, you know? Yeah. Do you know? Him? No. Uh, yeah. No, no. Do I know? The game? <laughs> yeah. No. Where you say. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is so funny. You say like two true things about you and then one lie and I have to guess what your lie is. Oh, okay. I should know this game. Okay. But I'll go first. I have a dog with one eye. I've never broken a bone or I'm 5'10". And then which one's the lie? You said, or you're 5'10". Yeah. Now I'm trying to remember how tall you were and if you were wearing heels. I think the lie is that you're 5'10". Although I'm not sure, do you have a dog with one eye? Yeah, I'm not 5'10". Man, I'm way shorter than that. But I do, I do have a dog with one eye. And you've never broken a bone? No. These are all good things. I am a great cook. I'm a very good singer. And I don't like watching TV. You really are putting me on the spot. Now Now I'm trying to think of other things to add to the game, but that's what I'll, that's what I'll roll with. I want to say that you're a good singer. Do you not like watching TV? Is that the lie? Do you like watching TV? What's your guess? Wait, what's your final guess? Okay, my final guess is your lie. <laughs> your lie is that you don't like watching TV. My lie is that I'm a great singer. Dang it! You know, I, I don't think you've done something like that. I love words ago. since we're in the TV business. I love watching game. Like I'll uh, watch every. I'm a league pass fiend, and I'll watch all types of games. Yeah. I am the worst when it comes to TV show. Like all this with Game of Thrones, every other. Mo I like I don't have the special <laughs> channels on my TV, and so I really fall short of a lot of the social conversations about any reality TV shows. Like I'm just I'm. Uh, I can't get into it and that I don't watch it. So we had some great fan questions for you. So want to get to as many as we can. Kristen Ledlow, tell us about the oh, our, girl. Our, show. our girl. Our girl. Can we fangirl for a sec? Our girl. Yes. <laughs> Says, as a woman in a still rare position, do you carry the weight of blazing a trail for the women behind you? I think that's an excellent question. No, no surprise to the to the incredible interview skills that Kristen Ludlow has. Um, I think in, in, I had these conversations a lot when I was first hired for this position. I cannot, we all are so grateful for the people who've come before us that are still going through all of these um, just changes and more opportunities uh, within the industry. But I look at people like Ann Myers Drysdale and Doris Burke and the the path in which they had set and you know it just so many others in different roles i think about beth moens and what jessica mendoza did and just those in other sports um so without a doubt i think that there have been you know a multitude that have already laid the foundation and have done such incredible work um that, that those are the people that i am grateful and thankful to even have the opportunity that i did and of course my bosses 
um, at the Yes Network, but but I do think that's a huge part of it. Like that was the one thing that always uh, really rung so true to me was that there's just a great responsibility. There's a great responsibility because the more um, that you are competent at your job, the more people will get these opportunities, the more young women, the more females. And I think, um, you know, it's, it's not, uh, I don't look at it as, you know, that you're carrying a, a big weight about that, but I think in, in all areas and Chris and Ludlow is, is, you know, doing things in her own way. And so I think we all are just carrying this responsibility that whatever we are doing to going back to how can we be our very best? So, you know, that allows up others to have the same opportunities that we're having. And I think there's been incredible growth and a great amount of movement and the direction of where so many, you know, so many different people that are in roles that are not typically looked at, whether it's, you know, gender, whether it's race, whether it's ethnicity, you know, the list keeps going on, um, are getting great opportunities and are doing incredible work. And I just, I, I love how far we've come. I think there's still a long ways to go, but um, but certainly that's a part of it that you think about. It's not just about the work you're doing, but about who you're doing it for. You know, I had done one of these episodes with Brooke Weisbrod of ESPN, and she, she had written an article that said, you know, when two young girls are watching a game maybe, and they see someone in an analyst position, in a sideline position, calling the game, well, now that job is a reality for them and they think, oh, I can do that. Where do you see room that we can still work and push ourselves closer to that kind of inclusiveness within this industry? I, I think it's, you know, and if we're specifically looking, let's say females in this instance, the more sure. that, I think the more that individuals are doing it, the more we see women in, in different roles and different positions. Um, I even look at it, the way the NHL, NHL and how they throughout the course of the Stanley Cup playoffs have, you know, really taken to that and now have female analysts in those roles. I think, you know, in, in all sorts of things, and it doesn't just have to be the analyst role, but the play-by-play -play role to all things, to the producer role, to those, you know, behind the scenes in the yeah. truck, um, to those in executive positions. And again, I think it's just, it's just steps and small steps and getting to a point, like that's the beauty of it now when I see, and it's not just about young, the young girls of the next generation. To me, it's the young boy, it's to everyone. I mean, the responsibility also lies on the fact that, yeah, is it about allowing young girls to see that? But I, I like the fact that young boys now, when I talk to them or see them, it's not a question to them of, wait a second, why are you calling games that men are playing? It's, it's become so much more um, of the norm rather than a novelty. And I, I again, I think it's just a, about more people stepping in those roles, those doing the hiring, being more open-minded to, and it's also the best possible people for the job. I think we still, you know, it, that goes back to the responsibility of making sure that, you know, it, it's not just about singling out who we're hiring or, you know, whether it's a, a woman um, going for a role, but, but who is the best possible candidate for the job? And, and you know, it, I think just, again, we're moving in the right direction. I think just the more people, too, that are interested in those positions and want to be in those positions and work to be in those positions certainly help. Well, thank you for everything that you wow. could do, continue to do for everyone coming up behind you. Well, I, it, we, like we said, we all, we're all in this because we love it and we have a passion for it. So it's, um, I feel very lucky for, for that matter that I even get to go and show up at a job of which I, I never, ever feel like is work. All righty. So Jerry, I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name, but I'm going to put it on the bottom. So sorry, Jerry. <laughs> Says, with so few female analysts, parentheses, but many more to follow in the path you're blazing. Who's your inspiration as an analyst, whether it be male or female? That's a great question um, from Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. I, I think that the, the natural um, answer is Doris Burke. One, because she's a an extraordinary role model. I think I've always just admired the work she's done, and not just as an analyst, but through all of her different roles. Uh, the type of preparation she puts in, I think she has such a diligence in um taking every single game and it's seemingly every single task, every single um, job that she has with uh, such a seriousness to make sure that she is um, just the most prepared. And that's a, that's a big part, I think, of any job 
that we do. So I think by, by nature, she's, she's the first one yeah. that, that I think of. Um, but I also there, you know, there's many others that maybe aren't in my particular role, but that I look at and I can, you know, see the work that they do and how they get ready for games. I mean, Ian Eagle is my partner, Ryan Rucco being my partner, but I have such a respect for them and an admiration for what it is that they do. And I think a lot of what I look at is how do people prepare stylistically? How are they their most authentic selves? Um, you know, a, a person I'm, I always watch and have always been a big fan. I mean, you look at like Steve Smith or Grant Hill, um, Chauncey Billups, kind of the list goes on of a lot of different analysts that I listen to. And I think, gosh, they really, they explain the game well, or they have an insight, insightfulness. Um, there's people like Chris Weber, Weber and Reggie Miller, who've got such um, a, a great charisma to them and bring a, a different you know, atmosphere, uh, kind of different aspect of how they announce a game. And to me, I just think you can learn from everyone and how they approach things and the things that they point out. But more than anything, too, and, and Hubie Brown is one that I think is just a brilliant mind, how he breaks things down. And I think when it comes to it, like it, it goes back to the advice you would give some be you like be the best version of yourself. And in saying that is how are you your most genuine and authentic self? And what's the best way in which you can be insightful and entertain and be informative to the viewers? And that's what we're trying to do. And so if I'm trying to entirely replicate just one person, it probably wouldn't come off the same because it's not um, all the parts of my personality or the way in which I'm able to, you know, give knowledge or give insight in the ways that I see it as someone else might. Uh, so that's why I think it's fun. That's why I think it's fun, you know, just watching people and watching how they do things. I mean, I've spent a lot of time watching. Um, Ian Eagle has been calling games with Greg Anthony throughout the course of um these Eastern Conference semifinals, and I and I look at how Greg and Greg was someone who had the opportunity to work with early on with the Brooklyn Nets and, and the things in which he picks apart. And I think that's that's why you can go down the list of ever. I, I truly just respect and admire everyone that's doing all of these jobs because they've all got their own way of going about it. And I think you can you can really just learn from everyone. Uh, but at the end of the day, you got to make sure that you're being your your truest self because that's I think what viewers want to see. You know, you mentioned some of your broadcast partners and some of the crew. This is a great lead in to our next question. Shout out to you for the help there. <laughs> uh, Jason Ross Jr. says the Nets on Yes crew has such awesome chemistry. Where do you feel that that comes from? Because y'all are fun. We, we just love each other. Like, we just truly love each other. And I, like, credit to our bosses, like shout out to John Filippelli and John Littner and Frank DeGray, because I think they recognize, I think a part of, you know, understanding who they want to bring on as a part of the team is also how everyone fits together. Because of all these things of, of the talent of people or the skill sets of people, just how do they fit together? Like how do their personalities fit together? How do they approach things in that way? And, and Richard Jefferson was with us um, this year for a number of games and just his personality was a great mesh with like myself or with Ian or with Ryan. like it's um, that I think is fun and I think the chemistry is real the friendships are real we truly feel like a family they're all my dearest friends and we talk you know when it's leading up to broadcast or throughout the course of the season but even all summer on different things and that's stuff that you can't fake like you can't fake you know, liking your partner. You can't fake if you get along with them. And so I think we're just really, really lucky in that regard because that's such a huge part of what we do um, is the relationships that you have and the way you can make fun of each other and play off <laughs> one another. Just, um, yeah. you know, th that's, that's the best part of it. And so I, you know, we all like to think it's almost like just joining us, like a couple of friends getting a chance to just watch a game and talk about a game. And so, um, yeah, I mean, we, we have a blast and I feel so thankful and so lucky because I truly do adore them and love all of them. So Tim Rushi would like to know, how do you study up on asking good questions in an interview? Uh, you should be answering this one. You've asked incredible questions <laughs> rolling, rolling into here, but no, I think it's just- it's You're gonna make me pass out. <laughs> no, it's true, it's true, girl. Um, it's knowing, knowing your subject. I mean, I think anytime you can, 
understand the entire background or even for example with if it's a if it's an NBA player or an NFL player or whatever just knowing where they've been the trajectory of their career prior to yeah. that you know just and of course it depends on how deep an interview is or what the you know what the goals are for the interview but I think just making sure that you're not you know just skimming through and, and I've noticed that in you know, so many instances, it's, it's not just about the simple questions. It's not just about, you know, getting to the meat of if you were covering a certain series, you know, what, what happened in the previous game or what's happening between them and this, like, do you know the background of how they have performed against the, you know, I'm thinking about a series right now, the, the Celtics and the Bucks and just kind of what's happening, but what, what happened last year and what happened throughout the course of different players' careers and, um, that always makes a difference. Like it's just as much knowledge and as you could soak up and as much background about what it is, even if it doesn't necessarily seem pertinent to an interview, I think that always helps. I think it always helps just to have the big picture of things. And I think about that even preparing for a game, you know, it's not just looking at, okay, you can look at the set of numbers and the stats for a season, but going deeper than that and what do they mean? And is there reasons behind it? Um, it? It's just, it keeps, to me, I keep, keep circling back to the same thing, but the more prepared you are, uh, the easier it is just because you'll understand the directions you can go or the things that might be interesting or, or what may make a person tick. Like, I want to know what makes an athlete tick, what really moves the needle for them and why they perform a certain way. And so I think when you can get to the heart of that, it, it always helps. And that comes from having as much information as possible. We got one final question for you. Brandon C. Smith five says, what is your main factor in always wanting to know more? It's inspiring. Oh, isn't everyone like that? <laughs> um, no, I think I, I just think that, um, that's how we grow. To me, I think about anything that I've ever wanted to do and whether it's playing sports or the jobs or the careers you think about, it, it's all about being challenged. I feel, I feel my most, just the most like me when I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone and when I'm challenged. And I think the more that we're learning about things and learning about information, um, whether it's job related, life related, people related, you know, in relationships and growing, like the more you get to know and the more inquisitive you are, um, it just, it helps to push you further in challenging your growth. And so I think that's it. Like, I think, you know, it, in terms of, in terms of work and in terms of job, I think it helps. And again, it's, um, it's about finding those nuggets. It's about finding really good stuff that, you know, people may not know and they may be interested in it. And that's, how it relates to a broadcast. And I think going back to our Nets on Yes team, like all of us kind of understand the ways in which each other prepares and the research we do and the areas we look at. And so that's why it helps because there's always something that we may bring up that would be like, oh, it's really interesting. And I didn't know that. And then you could play off that. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's just, that's a great part, whether it's this job or another job, how can you continue to challenge yourself? Normally the biggest way you can do that is just to keep looking for knowledge and keep looking for things to help you learn. Well, fangirl for life right here. Thank Girl. you so much. Anytime. Anytime. Reason, you're amazing, seriously. And like I said, thank you for everything you do. Thank you for helping you to you do. Set up Skype. Uh, just for everyone. This all now that I mean, we're Skyping Girl. everyone. That's what I'm saying. One day they're going to sponsor me. I have, I, you heard it here first. So I think Amanda smoked about. <laughs> Okay, guys, Sarah Kustak, I'm Amanda Smith. We'll see you next time.